Morning, everyone. As you saw in that quick little prequel, we got a new mower. Um, it is a Massey Ferguson 1372. It'd be the same as a Heston 1372 or a Agco 3312, I believe. And we recently got oh, a little over an inch of rain, probably one and a tenth inches of rain, so that's handy. We've been looking for a mower. We talked about it during hay season. The other mower we had was the original one we bought when we started our farm, our farm five years ago, and it was it's just too small. Um, we've made some tractor upgrades, and then different things have come around, and it just got to the point where it's too small, and it was time to upgrade. Well, we did that. So I took a quick little test pass because I'm like a kid on Christmas and just had to play with my new toy. We did test it here in this pasture, and it did really well. No problems. Um, it does need some new blades. The blades are very dull. It looks like they've been on there for a long time and they've they've hit some things with it. The rollers looked all right. They uh, appear to be in good shape and everything functions as it should, it seems. All right, so we got it all cleaned up. I'll lift it up and show you, but really not a whole lot to show other than the 180 has the oil leak now on the oil pressure sensor right there. So I was sitting there wondering, I was like, hey, why is my oil pressure light on? That wasn't on before, but that answers why. All right, let's see if this thing's got enough hydraulics to lift it. does but boy it's slow but it lifted it there's not any gr as many grease zerks on this machine as i thought there would be but for the most part all of them that are there like i don't have to unbolt any covers they're all accessible you might have to lift a cover like this one or slide um you know a shield back and forth or something like that or sorry rotate it around but other than that it's really i'm pretty happy with it um the way that they're lined up is pretty decent too so i don't have to like move the tractor around or anything like that. The other weird thing is, is like, this machine is really easy to turn. Like I can turn it with my hands um, really easily, far easier than I could with my John Deere uh, 1360. And I would attribute that to the, you know, the drum for the flails, which I really thought that the drum would take less, um, you know, power to turn, I guess, but I guess I'm wrong. Or maybe it does, and this is just geared differently, I don't know. The other thing I did change, actually really the only thing I changed was, I've got the, um, the wind rows as wide as this will make it, and I also have the diverter up as high as it'll go because I want it to go through here. And, you know, a six foot wind row is, is pretty wide, that's, that's all right. I don't know what we'll have to do with the rollers, and I'll show you why. This is why I don't know what I'm, I'm gonna need to do with the rollers, because our second cut, is mostly blade and it's usually a thinner crop than first cut. First cut has a lot more stems in it and I know it's probably going to be hard to see but there's a crimp oh every two inches probably but it's a real light crimp. Um, I mean you can barely see it. You can see that one in the center because I folded it over there to bring it back in because the wind was so bad outside. This one you can see the crimps a little better again about every two inches right it's pretty obvious they're there but um, you know, cardboard's, I would call it a, you know, an eighth inch, roughly. Maybe it might be a little thinner than that. Now this was done, and this is probably a little over a quarter inch, you know, less than three eighths, but more than a quarter. And you can see it's, it's made it look like corrugated metal, basically. So it's crimping it like it should. And, you know, we were able to roll it and do it by hand. Pretty simple process to check it. I think I'm going to leave it because my minor thought process here is that 
the crop going through is gonna be probably at least a quarter inch. I mean, if it's not a quarter inch, it's not worth me cutting, honestly, because if it's that thin coming through there, that means it's gonna lake way less than one bale an acre. And by that problem, or by that point, it's not worth running my tractor. It'd be further off leaving it there and just letting animals graze it. Surprisingly, this tractor is not light on the front end with this hooked up to it. I really thought it would be. And, you know, kind of had me worried at first, but now I'm pretty confident it's not gonna be a problem. That's what I was talking about, how I can steer it. And everything else that I've been looking at, everything looks fine. Nothing looks like it's, you know, it was on fire at one point. Um, that kind of had me wondering at first if somebody repainted it all, but the inside is painted, the outside looks to be factory style paint or factory paint. And then it has a bunch of scratches through it, like somebody was trying to say that, or, you know, debadge it and, I don't know, maybe they're embarrassed of it being a, a Massey Ferguson or a Heston series or whatever, but you can see the 1372 stickers right there. You can see the Massey Ferguson one's gone. You can see the Heston series right there pretty clear, but the data plate doesn't lie. Um, I mean, it's pretty obvious that's what it is. And then it also has the Massey Ferguson dealers that it apparently was originally bought from in uh, Chicka Chickasha, Oklahoma, or well, one of these three locations anyways in Oklahoma. But yeah, I, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty content with it, pretty happy with it. And uh, we're going to see here in, well, pretty much exactly a month, I'll be cutting hay, whether, whether it's a good crop or not, which I think it's going to be. So thanks for watching. Have a blessed week. We'll see you next time.